I'm Hank Magnuski from Mencast Corporation, and I'd like to give you a, an update on what we've been doing since the last unconference. Um, we have a line of capture agents um, at work within the Matterhorn community. I was going to put the title as that work, but um, I decided to. So, um, a few of the topics that I'm going to uh, go over would be a little bit about our company for those of you who are not familiar with NCAST Corporation, um, a little bit of the activity that we've had in the educational community, and um, an update on what our capture agents are doing out in the field. Oops. So NCAST has a, a couple of product lines related to Matterhorn. We've really adopted Matterhorn um, hook, line, and sinker in terms of um, in incorporating it into our product line. We have a line of encoders. Uh, the Telepresenter M4 is being used in this auditorium. You can see it in the back of the room. It's our high-end encoder and, and streaming box. We have another series uh, which does 1080p or 7, 720p called the Presentation Recorder line that also streams and records. And we have been working hard on our own uh, commercialized version of the Matterhorn server, which we call the presentation server. And that server is actually uh, hosting the, some of the videos from this conference. It's uh, an instance on Amazon right now. And um, you can see the archived recordings uh, on our presentation server um, by going to the links that were published earlier. We've been um, deploying uh, lecture capture systems into a large number of schools, and at the moment we're involved in, I think, close to a dozen Matterhorn pilot projects uh, around the globe. We were one of the first encoder companies to announce support for Matterhorn. We've uh, delivered on that promise, I think. We've had <coughs> the, our capture agents uh, hardware uh, at some major schools, and um, we are also one of the commercial affiliate uh, partners to the project. At the last unconference, I announced uh, full support of the capture agent interface to be within our software. And I'm happy to report today that uh, we, we have completed that effort. The capture agent, the native capture agent code is in all of our products at the moment. Uh, it, it's just a simple firmware upgrade for any of the older units that we have out in the field. So anybody who has an NCAST uh, encoder can upgrade to have a full Matterhorn implementation. The software at this point, I'd say, is quite stable and quite uh, well field tested. We've had a lot of input and feedback from various communities testing our encoders. And uh, right now, I think it's uh, pretty much bug free and, and ready to, to go. We um, have had some feedback about um, introducing um, automatic, an automatic mechanism, mechanism for taking our composite image and putting it into the Matterhorn dual video track format. So we are introducing what we call a smart workflow for the server. We send the coordinates of the windows that are in our composite image so that the server software knows where the PIP in the main window is and can split apart those windows to make the two tracks that Matterhorn requires for a dual stream player. So um, that's um, going to simplify the uh, ability of users to deal with the uh, capture agent um, images that we create with our encoder. We have also done some work on the server itself, adding some sought after features like a delete button and a <laughs> remove button. Uh, plus some other um, enhancements that we thought were needed for more commercial users that uh, simplify some of the pages and added some need needed features to, to other pages. And finally, uh, in, the, in the back of the room is Pavel, probably one of the world's experts on the capture agent interface because he's had to study it. And he has some proposals I hope he'll be able to present later in the conference on uh, ideas for a, a capture agent 2.0 API for uh, the next round of Matterhorn. So 
in terms of our hardware, we have the high-end telepresenter M4. This is a 1080 uh, P recording box. It does full 30 frames per second based on uh, Intium, Intel Pentium technology. We have the PR720 series. This is a rack mount unit, a 1U rack. It's, uh, a copy of it is in B108 right now, uh, which we can use for streaming and recording uh, sessions there. We have a dual streamer. You can capture and stream two uh, 720p images with this device so that if you have a high def camera and a high def graphic that you want recorded or streamed, uh, you'll be able to do that with this, uh, this box. For a small form factor, we have the podium mount box, which you can screw to the sh shelf of a podium. And for mobile applications, a uh, little desktop unit uh, again, all of the, the electronics are the same in these uh, capture agents. The form factors are different. This you can throw in your roller board, uh, take it to a conference, and do your seminar recording uh, at, a, at a remote site with a very small package. On the 720 series, we have a variety of input connectors. There's a VGA or component input a VGA loopback, which saves you having to buy a VGA splitter. You can run the loopback output to your house projector. There's a, a S-video and composite standard def inputs. We have HDMI, DVI-I, uh, balanced audio, uh, regular PC audio, a RS-232 serial command port, and a local confidence monitor display that you can see what the composite image is, uh, how it's being created and how it's being streamed. So a typical installation would be um, a video source, such as a PTZ camera, a, a graphic source, typically a VGA from your laptop, audio, uh, touch panel. Uh, practically all of our installations have Crestron or AMX controller as part of their um, control interface. <clears throat> a room projector and obviously an internet connection to push the files up to the server. NCAST has an architecture. We have a large number of potential channels, or these are presets or templates, so that you can adjust the layout and the, the um, form in which the video, the main and the PIP windows are being composited. So uh, here you have a, an example of some of the standard factory layouts. Um, windows on the, the PIP window on the left, on the right, uh, graphics only, video only, and so on. There are 25 suggested layouts. You can change them uh, as you wish. We, we give you full freedom and flexibility to alter the coordinates and the sizing of the windows as, as you need them. So our server product comes in two form factors. One is a, a hardware box, a regular server uh, platform. We also have a Amazon machine instance of the server, and that, that is what was launched. Our um, third release of this server is now online and, and serving up the videos from this conference. And um, most recently, for one customer, we actually installed our software on a, their own Blade server. They had their own infrastructure that they wanted to use. So if you're interested in having us load Matterhorn on a, on a Blade system, we're able to do that as well. It's a pretty flexible uh, installation package. So one of the differences between our encoder and the reference capture agent is we have in-room controls for ad hoc recording. So you can have start and stop buttons on your touch panels to uh, activate the recording pretty easily. Uh, we also have very extensive confidence monitoring. I was asked about this earlier. Um, uh, Saskatchewan wants to, to build a little Arduino box or something to probe our encoders. Well, we'll happily give you the status on what input signals are active. Is it recording? Is it streaming? Uh, what the audio level, levels are? Uh, what state the recorder is in? All, all sorts of status information is available through the serial command set.
When the encoder um, starts up, it sends its uh, logon information to Matterhorn. It's a completely standard use of the uh, official API, so there, there's nothing you have to do. Just put in your credentials and, and go for it. The uh, capture agent activation is simple. A couple of uh, forms on the interface, and you're on the road. We send to the server information about what channel you're using, what inputs are available and active, um, other status uh, information, like how much, how much disk space is left on the server, I mean, on the encoder. You can start a recording either through the manual controls, through Google Calendar, through uh, Matterhorn scheduling, um, and do either an automatic or manual file upload. It's, it's a very flexible system. The workflows and series come from either one of two places. If you schedule a recording, the workflow in the series will be downloaded from the server, and that's what, what will be uploaded in the media package. If you do an ad hoc recording, then you specify in the channel template what workflow and series uh, are to be used so that when the file is uploaded and processed, the channel information controls uh, what you get. So if you start a different channel, you can define different series and different um, workflows depending on what channel was used to um, record the video. The encoders actually go to the server, pull down all the series and workflows that are available, and present them to you as a part of the channel setup operation. There are two ways to schedule our boxes through the standard Matterhorn scheduler. And we also provide a Google Calendar interface so that you can use Google to um, activate the box. Finally, we have uh, several tools for confidence monitoring. This is a simple Java applet that uses serial commands over IP telnet to uh, talk to the box. You can get a little thumbnail of what's being sent. You can, you can get audio levels. Um, various versions of this Java applet could be used as a poor man's Crestron, or I shouldn't, <laughs> shouldn't mention Crestron here, but uh, um, as, a, as a very uh, cheap and, and uh, inexpensive controller, you can just buy a netbook or, or even run, this, uh, run some software on your Android phone to control our boxes. Are there any questions about our any questions for NCAST? What? Price. The list price of the uh, least expensive encoder is $4,995. Uh, we have heard feedback from a lot of Matterhorn users. And for uh, multi-unit deployments, our sales guys are sharpening their pencils. So um, I, I think if you're you know, interested in um, more than just one unit, we, we should talk. Is it possible to get the media off the device without switching to the Matterhorn? Yes, the, um, let me, yes, let me bring up the, Here you see the archive page of the unit that's in the back of the room. You see a whole um, bunch of captured programs waiting to be processed. They haven't been processed because we've been streaming all morning. But as soon as those, um, as soon as the, the session is stopped, those will all be finished up. And you can see archives from other recordings done earlier than uh, this week uh, still on the unit. Um, if you hit the upload button uh, and it's a Matterhorn channel, it'll actually 
re-upload to Matterhorn um, based on the credentials of the channel that was uh, used to record the device. So there's 32 gigabytes of on onboard storage for the 720 series and uh, 500 gigabytes in the uh, high-end telepresenter line. All right. Thank you. Oh, Question. on that end? Working, hey, Hank. Um, just a question on the on the presentation server. Um, you you said it's based on Matterhorn, fully based on Matterhorn. Yes. Um, I can see um, Pavel being being active on list. Um, are you considering con contributing back the changes you made? Is is it an open product at all? Is it something you sell separately? Because some, you haven't talked about that part. Some some of the things uh, we will contribute. Some are cosmetic, maybe a different layout of the media gallery that that is our preference, I'd say, for, for display. Um, I, I think some of the uh, feedback is forthcoming, so yes. S some of it is very NCAST specific, that is only of value really to people using our encoders, like the smart workflows are uh, very tuned into our own hardware. No. No, we're, we're currently running on the 1.3 release. Uh, we had thought about going to 1.4, but there, there were um, too many issues yet for, for us to go to that. But the, the current core of the presentation server is, is a 1.3 software release. All right. Uh, we have one more present. Thank you, Hank yeah. and NCAST.